morning, 639. I want to check in with Drew Kozov today. He's actually inside the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Not only through the morning looking at the exhibits and the people who put that together, but now actually a conversation with the people who actually built the museum itself. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, guys. Yes, the people who literally, not figuratively, built the museum. Uh, PCL Construction has done a fantastic job. And I would like to introduce you to uh, Rob Dirksen, uh, Construction Manager with PCL. Good morning, and thanks so much for joining us here. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we've got to see it from the outside, all come together. Now being inside, it is so beautiful. You guys have done a fantastic job with the museum. Let's talk a little bit about the creation and the vision, because uh, world-class architects all had their chance to come up with a design for it. You guys were given the design, then what happens? Well, after we resisted the urge to run, <laughs> uh, you know, we had to assemble a world-class team, right? For world-class building, you need a world-class team. And, uh, you know, we, we did that. And uh, from the sub-trades, uh, suppliers and stuff I had, I can tell you, uh, workmanship in Canada is alive and well. You know, yeah. there's some phenomenal workmanship and, and tradesmanship that went into this building. So we have a lot to be proud of, but since I have someone from, from PCL here, I want to know some of the, the insider stuff, the secret stuff, because one of the cool stories that you were telling me is everyone who worked on this building actually has a special spot where they're going to be immortalized, right? Yeah, we approached the museum and they allowed us to install dedication plaques up on level 5 terrace. Uh, it's the PCL Builders Terrace, we're calling it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we wanted to, you know, dedicate that space to all the men and women who worked so hard on this iconic project. So we've engraved in glass panels the names of 2,500 people who had a direct and sustained involvement in this project, right from the people who supplied porta potties to the, you know, uh, electrical, mechanical, uh, masons, you know, uh, and, and the like. Wow, what a point of pride. So when we're tuning around for the museum, we can, can look at all those, uh, those names on the plaques and recognize some, some local folks and some friends and family, perhaps. Yes, yeah. Very, very exciting stuff. Now, I've got to ask um, about the glass that envelops the museum, because that is such an important and iconic part of the look. Um, what were some of the, the challenges working with that and bringing the look together? Okay, well, there's about 1,300 individual pieces of glass there, right? And that was uh, designed and, uh, by a company out of Germany. And, uh, you know, the structure that holds it up it was also designed by them. The installation of it, you know, was, was phenomenally difficult just because of the, the angles, the curvature, and the reach. You know, you had to... Nothing is straight up and square around here, right? Uh -huh. So every time you build uh, something here, you have to go up, out, sideways tilted and you know so standard scaffold will just not do it so everything was pretty much done by tube and clamp scaffold right so individual pieces you know one piece of uh, scaffold and you put on a clamp and then another piece and you oh basically gosh. build a forest of of uh, scaffold you know using a tube and clamp method and at one point almost the whole vertical surface of that glass area was tube and clamp scaffold just to help with wow. the installation of the glass. What yeah. a daunting process. Uh, like you said, um, I'm surprised that you guys didn't turn and run with such a big project, but you guys are set up to tackle anything around the world, and this is going to be your mark uh, right here in Winnipeg for all of Canada and the world to be proud of. And we're almost out of time, but just quickly before I let you go, uh, opening ceremony is going to be 10.30 today. The world is going to get to see this place. Touring around now with, with just hours to go before it opens up to everybody. How are you feeling? Uh, it's like Christmas, right? When you've bought some really cool and exciting presents for your kids, you know, and the family and stuff, and you can't wait to see, you know, them open it up and, and see the excitement in their face when, when they get to see what you have seen for so long, right? It just, it's just very, very, very exciting. Well, it's now your time to show it off, Rob. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having us. What a special day here in uh, Winnipeg. And if you want to be part of the celebration, 10.30 uh, today is the opening ceremonies. They'll be broadcast live right here on City, so you won't miss a thing. If you want more information about the museum and when you can come down here and tour it for yourself, you'll find that on the BT website at breakfasttelevision.ca. We're taking a little break, but we still have plenty more to show you as we celebrate the opening of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights.